Good morning, today. Today, today, today. Today we're going to discuss graphing. And so let's commence operations. For those of you following along in your notes, please turn to this page now. Graphs, graphs, and more graphs. A position time graph. Well, what does a position time graph indicate? It indicates the position of an object at a particular instant in time. For all the situations we'll be looking at today, we'll be considering motion in a straight line. Either the object is moving east or west, or the object is moving north or south. In general for these graphs, that's the type of motion they can only represent. The slope of a position time graph is the velocity, or the speed. Now why is that? Recall that slope is rise over run. Rise over run. The rise is the change in position. Final position, D2. Subtract the initial position, D1. That's displacement. The run is the change in time. Final time, subtract initial time. That's delta T. So the slope of a position time graph is the velocity. And so the question is, what does a steeper slope correspond to? Please write down an explanation now. All right, I hope you tried it. A steeper slope corresponds to a higher velocity or speed. All right, I want to show you a simulation right now. So in this simulation, we can show a car moving back and forth. So let's start off with a car not moving at all. Let's place it at a position of 5 meters and let's press the start button and see what that looks like. It's not a very interesting graph. The car hasn't moved and notice it's a straight line over the course of time of 4 seconds. What would negative 10 meters look like? Let's see. So notice the car is at a negative position with respect to the reference point. And again, not very interesting, the graph. It's a straight line and the graph is not changing its position because the car is not moving. So when an object is stopped on a position time graph, notice it's just a straight line across. And by the way, the slope of that line is zero. All right, let's make it a bit more interesting. Let's start at a position of zero and let's give it a speed of two meters per second. I'll reset this. And so on a position time graph, that's what constant velocity looks like. It's just a straight line with a constant slope. Notice after four seconds, if it's moving at two meters per second, after four seconds, it should be around eight, and that's where it sort of looks like it's at. What would negative, let's make it negative four meters per second. Let's see what that would look like. Well, notice the negative means the car is moving backwards, and it's moving a little faster this time. It's moving twice as fast, so now it's not just at eight meters, it's at negative 16 meters. Notice the slope of this graph is negative. This slope is a positive slope. This would be a negative slope corresponding to the velocity. And in fact, if you do rise over run, negative 16 divided by 4 would be your negative 4 meters per second. How would this graph change if instead of Starting at the zero, you start at the negative two position. So let's see. 
So you're not starting at the zero here. You're starting at the negative two position. Let's see. And notice for the graph, the only thing that changes is where it starts. It's no longer starting at zero, it's starting at negative two. But the slope doesn't change because the velocity hasn't changed. Let's show you a case of where the object starts at, say, five meters, and it's still negative. Let's make it negative five. So we'll reset that. Notice the car has started ahead of the zero at the five meter point, but now it's traveling negative five. Negative five meters per second. And notice, Whereas the object ended up at? Well, it's ended up at negative 15 meters. And again, this is a negative slope. Let's show you one more example. Let's make the initial position equal to zero. And we'll go at three meters per second. And now we'll go at four meters per second, which is a slightly higher velocity. And notice the slope is slightly steeper. All right, so that's the idea for constant velocity motion. You'll get a straight line. Slope doesn't change for constant velocity. If it's moving in a positive direction, the slope will be positive. If it's moving in a negative direction, well, then the slope will be negative. Let's continue on. All right. There are times where you may be asked to interpret a graph, such as the case here. So example one, the following graph represents the motion of a student in a straight line, either east or west in the classroom. Describe the motion of the student in each section. So here's the graph in greater detail. At time zero, they're at their reference position, or zero meters. Two seconds later, they've moved two meters east. This E stands for east. And then another four seconds later, so now at the six second mark, they're at four meters east. And then it seems for a few seconds, they, they don't move. They're staying at four meters east. Then all of a sudden, 10 seconds, the person decides to move east again. And two seconds later, they're at six meters east. And then for whatever reason, they decide to turn around and head all the way back to where they started. So in 16 seconds, they're back where they started. They started at zero meters and they're back at zero meters. And so what would we actually say? Well, for section A here, person moved two meters east in two seconds. Two meters east in two seconds. B, another two meters east, gone two meters east, but this time in four seconds. And see, the person hasn't moved at all. They're stopped for over four seconds. And remember, what's the slope of this line? Slope is zero. That means their velocity is zero. Section D, they've moved another two meters east in another two seconds, two meters east in two seconds. And then for section E, person hasn't moved east anymore. Now notice they're moving back to where they started, back to position zero. And altogether, they've moved six meters west. Notice the slope is negative. On a position time graph, when the slope is positive, they're moving east, but when the slope is negative, they're moving west. So one of the questions that I like to ask my students is, calculate the average speed and velocity from zero to 16 seconds, because I really want them to understand the difference between speed and velocity. So we know the formula for speed, that's distance over time. 
So time is 16 seconds. That's obvious from 0 to 16 seconds. It's got to be 16 seconds. And the distance. How do we get the distance? Well, notice we label each section of the graph. 2 meters, 2 meters, 0, 2, and 6. And all we do is we add. Remember, distance, direction doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the direction when tabulating distance. 2 plus 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 6, that's 12 meters. And when we do our division, it's 0 decimal 75 meters per second. Now, velocity is different. Remember, it's displacement over time. So for average velocity, it's displacement, not distance, displacement. The time, once again, is 16 seconds, of course. That doesn't change because we're going from 0 to 16 seconds. But the displacement. When we determine displacement, direction matters. The formula looks very similar to what we did for distance. We add numbers, except here we're adding negative 6, 0 meters. Remember what displacement is. It's the change in position. Has the position changed over 16 seconds? Let's see. Well, at 16 seconds, the position is 0. At 0 seconds, the position is also 0. So no, the position has not changed. Therefore, the displacement is 0. And so therefore, the velocity is 0. So keep that in mind. Displacement is the change in position. Here's one way of tabulating or calculating displacement, adding all the numbers up and considering the direction. But the other way is just looking. Where are you on your graph? Well, at 16 seconds, your final position is 0. Your initial position is also 0. Therefore, your displacement is 0. All right. I want you to try this problem right now, just to make sure you really understand the concept. That's the only way in physics you really understand if you understand something, is by trying something. So calculate the average speed from 2 to 14 seconds, and then calculate the average velocity from 2 to 14 seconds. So from 2 seconds on the graph to 14 seconds on the graph. Go ahead, pause the video now. Okay, hopefully you tried that out. And so the distance starts here this time, 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 3, because we're stopping at 14 seconds. Distance is 7 meters, the time is 12 seconds, and I'll let you do that division of distance over time. Average velocity, however, it's only 1 meter. 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus negative 3. Now does that make sense? It's 1 meter. Let's see. It starts at 2 meters east, it ends at 3 meters east, and the question is, what's the change in position? Well, the change in position is 1 meter east. He's moved, or she's moved, 1 meter from where they started. You start at 2 meters, you end at 3 meters, you're basically one step away from where you started on this trip. Again, I'll let you do the division here of 1 over 12 to figure out the average velocity. Hope you enjoy today's lesson. Have a great day.